right. Um, I'm going to read something that was uh, first published by Janet uh, Kaplan in what is called Swimming to America, which is, uh, there's only 100 of them and they're all gone, except for a couple that you can pay a whole lot of money for at, at, Chartwell, at Chartwell Booksellers in Manhattan. Uh, and that's it, and everything else is gone. But there are uh, several uh, poems in the book and, uh, and many of them are, um, they're really interesting uh, because they are, for the most part, prose poems. I don't really often write prose. But um, here's uh, a couple. And uh, one is for Toni Morrison, it's called Dream Book. Uh, if anybody's ever been to Memphis, Tennessee, and you've been on Beale Street, you may have walked into a store called A Suave's. Uh, is now sort of a tourist site, but when I was living in Memphis, it was a regular store. And it was where everybody went to find stuff that isn't made anymore because it was that kind of store where they would buy up all the stuff that had been, they, whenever a store went out of business or a company went out of business, they bought up all the stuff. And so you could find like ancient cotton underwear that you can't find anymore <laughs> because they had it there and for really cheap. Uh, but it also has, and still does, all of the stuff for hoodoo. Mm -hmm. uh, so they have dream books, and spell books, and magic candles. And if you take, try to take a picture of anything, it doesn't come out. <laughs> I, yeah. Dream book. 522 two was a number in the book, the number in the book before the flames took a character skin. A friend would look and ponder the corner of Suave's second floor on Bill where the book of numbers waited for a quick or hesitant purchase. The one with a rooster or a crow, or is that what I remember? These pamphlets promised the triumph of twos and threes and fours. For the hoodoo men and the hoodoo women up from the bottom, Cotton sucked their lungs and broke fingers and skin. For every pregnant woman was a dime in the bank, and the men played dreams from the dream book. Quarter dreams, dollar dreams, dreams that drug their souls split open by a sun so ruthless it was universally cursed. Pity the true natives of this land with African blood coursing their veins Cursing the dreaming sun, king of labor, picking those dimes up one by one. And this is going to be a little bit of, I think Jason likes this poem a lot. <laughs> And if he was still alive today, he'd be in this room. Notes for the poem, Beloved of God, A Memory of David L. Jackson. At David Jackson's birthday party, the DJ played funk songs and early disco. As we stylish and sweating swayed our hips and streaked the end of winter air. Crossing the half century, who is still here and who has gone? Drugs, AIDS, congenital heart failure, cancer, gunshot wound. Wine dropped on the floor in remembrance as we step towards the uncertain future of gracefully aging or going out raging like rivers in Canada. creaky knees, his children's tantrums, or the daily rituals of teeth cleaning or phrases to Allah. His is a life forever fixed by 19 bullets bursting toxins and shutting down forever his heart, his lungs, his spleen, his brain. Eyes shut, limbs limp, 
lying in his essence flowing out towards the lit stage set that has become the vestibule of his last home in America. Where every other black man seems to be a suspect as he walks wearily from subway stop to home front, at least in New York City. I now know why I have always respected aging black men. To have defied the bullets ever ready to find their targets, these are men of immeasurable luck. The 60-something gentleman on the four train Friday morning, his voice still Georgia rich, schooling a younger black man, his voice rising in anger even as his suit and suave chapeau bespeaks a man of some power, lawyer, business executive, quote, they don't want you to live, unquote. And everybody knows who they are in his lexicon. Here we are at the start of a new century in the year of the dragon. And we look back to a tangled history of blood desires and bloodletting or denial and lies. The violent consequences of white supremacy for young men raised in fear and marked by badge and gun for the chance to lose sight of mission and common sense in the shadows of a doorway where every boogeyman story crystallizes in the body, mind, and heart of a young African man doing nothing in particular. Does not worth the paper it's written on and the loyalty of their brothers and mothers. <coughs> but who cares? They murdered. They know it. And so do we. What are we to make of it? How are we to school ourselves, fight the power, carry wallets, march, riot, boycott, scream? We live. We do not become so foolish that we think we cannot change the world. We remain as open to new ideas and as defiant of old expectations as that aging man, still angry and still working to make a difference that I heard on number four. Savoring the beauty of noise, gossip, anxiety, and joy, we pour libations and we remember who has been sacrificed and why. We celebrate a half century of moving on terra firma, dancing away from the bullets. You know, you can buy his CD. Uh, I don't know if uh, Nicole brought it.